Hi, and welcome to this tutorial. In the previous set of tutorials, we have uh, done dependency injection for primitives and string uh, member variables of classes. In this tutorial, we're going to do some uh, quote unquote real dependency injection. We're going to have another object which our object is dependent on, and we're going to inject that object to the object that um, we need. So I'm, I'm going to take an example of the triangle. The This is the same class that we had uh, used earlier. I'm going to remove some of the stuff here, I don't need uh, all these options here. We, have, we had all these constructors and a whole lot of things. We don't need all of that. Now, the draw method as well, I will uh, rewrite for this tutorial. So the object that I have in mind is uh, a point object. A triangle consists of three points. So my triangle object will have three different points. So let me first create a point object. So I'll go here to my package, say new and class. We'll call this point and finish. Now a point consists of uh, two values. One is an int x and int y. I'll mark them both as uh, private. and I'll generate getters and setters for them. Okay, let's save this. So here, what I wanna do is I wanna have three different point objects. So I will say private point, point A, and uh, the same way I'll have a point B and a point C. So let me generate the getters and setters for these as well. So let's generate getters and setters for all of them. Okay, so now the intention here is to use the spring dependency injection to pre-populate these point values. Now, what would we normally do if we were not using Spring? What would we do? We would initialize three point objects here. All right, we would say new point A, new point B, and new point C. We would set the values. We would say point A dot X equals, point A dot Y equals, again, point B dot X equals, point B dot Y equals. We would initialize all the values for these three points, A, B, and C. Then we would say new triangle, and then we would assign the points to this triangle object. So this there's a whole lot of initialization that we need to do here. If you're not using Spring, we would have to do all of them manually. Either we'd have to draw in the drawing app or we'd have to do the initialization in the triangle uh, class. If we do the initialization in the triangle class, that means that this triangle will have a fixed coordinates. So it will have a fixed set of coordinates. It'll have only one point A, one point B, and one point C. Of course, you can use the setters to change it, but uh, you would have a fixed starting point. And if you do it over here, then the code would be over here, then we can have multiple triangle objects with different points. But uh, the thing here is that we would have to do uh, all the initialization ourselves. So in this example, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use Spring to, to initialize these three points for us. So let's say uh, for this example, uh, we'll just remove this. This is again the remnant of our uh, previous tutorial. Okay, so this is the basic triangle bean definition. So let's say for our example, um, I'll create three points. One is uh, the zero point, zero comma zero, and uh, I'll create two more points. So I'll have a minus 20 comma zero and uh, zero comma 20. So these are the three coordinates that I want this triangle to have. So I need to define this in my spring.xml. So how do I do that? So the first thing I do is I define three different beans for these three points. You see here, we need three point objects. So all the three point objects I will define over here. So let's say bean id equals, I'll call this 
zero point class equals org dot koshik dot java brains dot point so i have my point bean definition here so this is equivalent to calling a new point so what i'll do is here i will preset the value so just like i used to do for the other uh, other example you know in our previous tutorial i will use a property tag in order to initialize this zero point with x and y values as 0 comma 0 so i'll have property name equals x value equals 0 close the stack the same way I'll have a property name equals y and value equals 0 so I have defined a 0 point so this creates an object of this point class with the x and y set as 0 okay so this is the first step now note that this triangle does not know about that point yet we need to reference that point here but um, as of now we've just created a point object the same way what I'll do is I'll create two other point objects okay I'll call this Point two, I'll call this point three. So the values that I'm going to pass for this one, it's going to be minus twenty, and for this, it's plus twenty. Okay, so now we have three point objects that we have told spring to create now spring needs a trigger to create this right so let's say for example I want to initialize these three point objects I could do this in the drawing app I could say context.getBean let's say zero point and it would give me a point object with x and the y set to zero it would be an object of this class to set x and y as zero and it would return me a point object so the same way in my drawing app, if I say get bean of point two, it would return me an object of this point class again, but with the x and y values set like this. So I can get these objects over here, right? I can get the objects over here, just like I could do a get bean, I can get a zero point, I can get point two and I can get point three. And I can say triangle dot set point A, triangle dot set point B, triangle dot set point C, that'll work. In that case, this triangle will have these three points set as the three points that we've defined here. But there is a better way to do this. So just like in our triangle, we did a property, right? We had a property tag and we had name equals the name of the variable and value equals the value that we needed to set. So if this were uh, a string, we would have the name and then we would pass the string itself. In this case, think about it. The member variable is actually an object. Now, since we have referenced the object over here, since we have specified the object over here, what I can do is I can ask Spring to get me this object and set this property. So what I would do is say I have point A here, right? I would say name equals point A and the value that I need to set for this is actually a reference to another bean in this XML. So in this case what I would do is I would not specify a value tag, I'd specify a reference tag and I would say the value of this should be this bean that I am referring from the spring.xml. So I'll pass this as zero point. Okay, now I will do the same thing for the other two points as well. So I will have point B, which refers to this point object. I'll have point C, which refers to the third point object. And 
save. Okay, so now what's going to happen is the Spring uh, framework is going to first encounter the statement context get bean. Now, in the context dot get bean, it looks up the Spring dot XML. It says, okay, I need to return this bean. Now, this bean has three pop property values set, so it has to satisfy these property assignments before Spring hands over the object back to our application. So what are the properties that we need to be assigned? So we have a point A, which is an object over here that we have defined, it's a point object, and we ask Spring to give a reference to a bean. So this looks up over here. So there is another bean here, which is of point, okay? and it has these two values of the property set. So it's gonna create this bean first. This is similar to what we saw earlier. It's gonna create the bean, it's gonna set the properties. And then instead of returning the bean, what it does is it assigns it to this property of the main bean that's actually working on. So next it's gonna look at point B. It's actually a reference to point two. Now it's gonna create an instance of point two. It's gonna set the values and it's gonna assign this point two reference to a property of this bean that it's actually working on. Same way, point three, it's gonna create this point three bean and it's gonna assign it to the point C member variable of this triangle object. And then once this triangle object is all created, it's gonna return back to this drawing app class that's actually making a reference to the get bean. So Spring does all these things automatically for us, okay? We don't have to do a get bean of each and every object that we are looking at. We just have to do a, the first level, okay? The first level object that we need, we need to get it by a get bean. But then after that, you can have as many nested objects as we want. Now say for example, the point here has another object as a member variable. You can actually create another bean, which is actually an instance of that object and then do a reference. I can have a property, I can do a ref instead of an actual value here. And then so it's gonna be this bean inside this bean inside this bean. So you can go as deep as you want. Spring is going to make sure it creates all the beans in order and uh, it's going to make sure all the properties of this main bean are assigned and satisfied before it hands over the bean back to us. So let's test this out. In my uh, triangle draw, I'm going to print out these three points. So I'm going to say system dot out print ln let's say point a equals and uh, get point a plus get I'm sorry, this is get point A dot get X, and this is get point A dot get Y. Okay, so I'm just printing out all the coordinates. It's not, not anything special here. And then I'm gonna close this parenthesis. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two points. So point B is again get point B dot get X and get point B dot get Y point C is get point C dot get X and get point C dot get Y. Okay, now let's run this and see what it prints. There you can see all the three points have been pre-filled. So the things that you're seeing here, these are not actually values of the triangle object. This is actually an object inside the triangle object and that object has these values that you're seeing over here. So Spring does this recursively and it's gonna make create all these objects, assign the object to my object that I'm uh, trying to get and then it's gonna return the object. So this is dependency injection that Spring uh, provides for us. And this is very handy because we have a full map of um, the object that we need. We don't have to do a new, do a set point and then do a set X, set Y. All these things have been removed. There's one consolidated place 
where you have the map of the objects and the values that you need and uh, you just initialize everything just by doing one call to the getBean method.